Penetanguishene, Ontario is part of the heart of Georgian Bay. Located just one and a half hours north of Toronto, it is home to the longest running winter carnival in Ontario. The history of the carnival dates to the year 1948. That year, a group of local citizens banded together and presented their event ideas to the Penetanguishene Chamber of Commerce and Council, receiving permission to hold the first Penetanguishene Winter Carnival in March of 1948. During the months of January and February, enthusiasm mounted, and by opening day, all challenges of fundraising and organizing had been well met. With over 500 people attending out on the frozen bay, it was a one-day festival with a full schedule of dog sled racing, skiing, snowshoeing, and scoot races. The scoots stole the show. They are a noisy, often dangerous, but speedy means of transportation. The crowds loved them. Steered by rudders, scoots are basically flat-bottom boats traditionally powered by light aircraft motors and air-driven propellers mounted on the rear. It was the practice of manually spinning the propeller to activate it that made it dangerous. Often, fingers or hands were lost. As early as the 1920s, they were the principal means of transportation for those winter island dwellers along the northern shores of Georgian Bay. They were highly reliable, as they were able to travel on ice, snow, and open water. Speeds during races were known to reach up to 80 miles per hour. Scoot races maintained their winter carnival popularity for several more decades to come. The very first carnival in 1948 was deemed a grand success, and it did not take long for additional attractions to be added to the schedule. In the years to follow, the Winter Carnival expanded in leaps and bounds. Each year saw more and more activities being built into the program. In 1949, horse races were a welcome addition to the itinerary at the Payette Racetrack in town. Some years, they were held out on the ice to the spectators' delight. The fishing derby also grew to be one of the main attractions. Scores of perch and pike were pulled in as thousands of people watched between five and seven hundred people bob for the grand prize being a boat and motor. In the year 1956, the highly coveted prize was won with the catch of a mere six-inch smelt. This was also the year that the parade was introduced. 1957 saw the very first Winterama Queen be crowned along with her princesses. There were 30 young ladies that competed for this honor. Married women were welcome to the competition as well as single women. Generous prizes were gifted with values of $500 for the queen and $150 to $250 for each princess. This tradition was carried through until the late 1970s. 1958 was to be a momentous year for the carnival, for it was in this year that the carnival was officially named Winterama. As well, this was the year that saw the appearance of the Winterama button. Prior to this time, paper pin-on tickets had always been used. Each year since, a new design has been applied to the button. As of late, the design for the button has been open to the public to submit their artistry. A few entries are selected and then a public vote is held to determine the winning button for that year. The Penetanguishene Centennial Museum has an exhibit in their collection with a button from each year on display for visitors to view. Attendee numbers were huge again in 1958, with 5,000 out-of-town spectators viewing the winning parade float from the Penetang Bottling Company. Sports groups, community groups, and businesses would produce the crowd-pleasing floats. Perhaps it was the change of name or simply the growth of attractions and reputation, but 1959 saw the closest available overnight room to be in Barrie. Notable happenings during the 1960s include Winterama making Maclean Magazine's top six list of winter carnivals in Canada. That year, there was a record number of 33 floats in the parade, a little over two tons of clay birds and shotgun shells used for the skeet shooting event, and the winning of a Remington automatic shotgun was awarded to Dr. Jim Fitzgerald for his excellent shooting skills. Winterama expanded to a three-day event and was recognized for being the only winter carnival in Canada where scoot races were held. The novice hockey tournament was also brought into play during this period, 
as well as snowmobiles joining scoots at the races. In addition to joining in on the races, snowmobiles became a highlight with riders showing their skills at puddle jumping. Puddle jumping is the art of riding a snowmobile across a span of open water. Speeds anywhere from 30 miles per hour up to 60 miles per hour are required to be maintained to complete the jump successfully. As Winterama entered the 70s, growth of the event was still increasing. Community spirit and socializing were a key element. The town dock was a social hotspot both day and night, with revelers staying out until the wee hours of the morning. Community dances were held in the evening along with the two local hotels seeing their share of festive patrons. 1971 saw the appearance of a snow or ice sculpture contest. Multiple residents in the community would devote hundreds of hours and skill in building enormous creations on their front lawns. It was a thrill for people to proudly display their talents as well as for the people who took the time to drive around town taking it all in. This was also the year that a snowman contest was participated in by the local elementary schools. As the town dock area slowly became the focus of scheduled events, snow sculptures also popped up along the waterfront. Organizers in 1977 estimated that 15,000 people were drawn to the event, with 10,000 alone watching the parade. A family favorite has for many years been the cardboard toboggan races. Families are challenged to build their own style of toboggan using only cardboard and tape for building and paint for decorating. Many hours are devoted to designing and building these magnificent creations. At the scheduled time, they all gather at the top of the hill and on the go, shoot down the hillside, hoping their toboggan holds together until they reach the bottom. Points are given for the fastest, the most occupants, and the spirit of the team. A huge attraction in recent years has been the ruckus, noisy, exhaust-filled air of the Smash'em Crash'em Car Derby. Thrill-seekers gather behind high, secure, and safe fencing to cheer on their favorite car or driver as they collide, reverse, collide again, lose fenders, and earn huge dents as they score big hits on each other. Always a success, always a thrill. A very valuable component of Winterama for several years has been the Polar Plunge. Organized by the Rotary Club of Penetanguishene, it is an opportunity for the community to participate in fundraising. Registered participants seek out sponsorship from family and friends, raising money for their favorite charity. On the day of the event, they very bravely slide down a small snowy hill and plunge into a pool of freezing water at the bottom. A fun aspect for spectators is to see the various costumed plungers decide to dress in, or to not dress in, very much at all. If you enjoy craft sales, Winterama can fill that need as well. Each year, a multi-vendor craft sale is held at the town museum, with hundreds of people attending and browsing for that special, unique item. Most shoppers leave with an item or two, leaving behind a very satisfied artisan. The most recent competitive sport, Croca Curl, is played on a round ice surface which is sculpted and painted very much like a crokinole board. In fact, the rules and objectives are the same. The game pieces are curling rocks, which you slide in the same fashion as in the game of curling, aiming to knock out the opposing team's rocks and landing yours in the center hole. Of course, a carnival is not a carnival without food. Pea soup and chili have always been staple foods of Winterama. It began with community groups, stores, and churches selling from booths along the main street of town. Over time, it has evolved into chili cook-off contests with vendors moving inside various buildings such as church halls, the local museum, restaurants, and even a bank or two. Each competing in the friendliest of ways to attract the biggest crowd and be known for the place to go for a good steaming bowl. Being a French-Canadian town, pea soup has certainly held its own in the competition for best recipe. A very welcome mainstay of Winterama has, and always will, be the festival's mascots Willie and Millie. They wander the crowds welcoming visitors, 
giving out massive hugs and encouraging the crowds to cheer on competitors. As well, these mascots make an evening appearance at the historic site Discovery Harbor, who in recent times have hosted trail skating, live entertainment, and fireworks on Friday opening night. No matter who you speak with in this bilingual close-knit town of 9,000, mention the word Winterama and they will have a fond story to share. Be it a memory of helicopter rides, parachute jumpers, log sawing competitions, wood chopping, broom ball, bowling, arm wrestling, figure skating, or curling, simply the joy and happiness found in the coming together of neighbors and friends, you can be sure the tale will come from the heart. Winterama is for many an annual homecoming event, where people return and bring their families and share stories of years past. As we look forward in the years to come, we can only wonder what new and creative ideas will take shape to carry Winterama into the future.